Today it is a tourist attraction, a vacation stopover. But from 1876 until 1909, you didn't come here for the fun of it. You came here to do time, hard time, the only kind of time available at the Yuma Territorial Prison. Inmates spent six days of every week at hard labor, on chain gangs, building roads and levees, farming, cutting wood, or making adobe bricks in the searing heat of the desert. Summer days with 120 degree heat were the worst. Nights were spent behind thick adobe walls and steel gates, six inmates to a cell. If you had enough starch left after a day in the sun, you might plan an escape into the endless miles of desert surrounding Yuma. But first you had to break out of your cell, get past the guards and over the 18-foot-high prison walls before reaching the treacherous country outside. Many tried and many failed and served the rest of their time here dragging a ball and chain. Only two ever escaped. 27-year-old A.A. A. Stewart, convicted of assault, escaped in 1900, as did 20-year-old burglar Richard Lorraine. But did they make it to freedom or die in the desert? Prisoners who got in trouble once inside Yuma were sent here, a solitary confinement area called the Dark Cell, for obvious reasons. The Dark Cell was dug into the side of a hill. The diet during confinement was bread and water and the sun was awfully bright to an inmate just released from this kind of solitary. More than 3,000 persons, including 29 women, did time during Yuma's 33-year history. 112 died here, most from tuberculosis, some from gunshot wounds while attempting escape. In 1907, with 417 inmates in its population, the Yuma prison was declared overcrowded, and the last prisoner removed in 1909. Since then, it has become the tourist attraction it is today. You can pick up a brochure here which says that all written evidence indicates that the prison was humanely administered and was a model institution for its time. But Yuma's reputation tells another story. Doug McAllister, News 8, on the move, Yuma.